Dr. Alexander Bruce, 9 Thurl of Elgin, 13 Thurl of Ken Cardine KGGCSIGPC, May 16, 1849, January 18, 1917, known as Lord Bruce until 1863 was a right-wing British liberal politician who served as Viceroy of India from 1894 to 1899. He was appointed by Arthur Balfour to hold an investigative inquiry into the conduct of the Boer War from 1902 to 03. The Elgin Commission was the first of its kind in the British Empire, it traveled to South Africa, and took oral evidence from men who had actually fought in the battles. It was the first to value the lives of the dead, and to consider the feelings of mourning relatives left behind. And it was the first occasion in the history of the British Army that recognized the testimony of ordinary soldiery as well as that of the officers. Background and Education Elgin was born in Montreal, Canada, the son of James Bruce, a Thurl of Elgin who served as Governor-General of Canada at the time, and his wife Lady May Louisa, daughter of John Lambton, 1st Earl of Durham. He was educated at Glenalmond, Eton and Balliol College, Oxford. Political career Elgin entered politics as a liberal, serving as Treasurer of the Household and as First Commissioner of Works under William Ewart Gladstone in 1886. Viceroy of India, following in his father's footsteps, Elgin was made Viceroy of India in 1894. His Viceroyalty was not a particularly notable one. Elgin himself did not enjoy the pomp and ceremony associated with the Viceroyalty, and his conservative instincts were not well suited to a time of economic and social unrest. During his time as Viceroy, famine broke out in India, in which Elgin reportedly admitted that up to 4.5 million people died. Elgin Commission Elgin returned to England in 1899 and was made a Knight of the Garter. From 1902 to 1903, Elgin was made chairman of the commission that investigated the conduct of the Second Boer War. He was appointed Honorary Colonel of the 1st Fifeshire Volunteer Artillery Corps on March 26, 1902. The Elgin Committee discussed cavalry in spring 1903. Many mounted infantry units had been raised during the Boer War, some from scratch and some by converting infantry units. All were agreed that cavalry should be trained to fight dismounted with firearms but traditionalists wanted cavalry still to be trained as the arme blanche, charging with lance and sabre. Although the traditional view appears absurd with hindsight, at the time matters were less clear-cut. General French stressed the importance of morale, after the success of his cavalry charges at Eon Slagged and Kimberley. This view was by no means extreme. Major Jin J. P. Brabus and thought sword and lance were suitable only for Latin cavalry, and that Anglo Saxons should instead be equipped with a light battle e axe or tomahawk. After Wolseley, Evelyn Wood, and Roberts, all of whom had seen the future of cavalry as being for use as mounted infantry only, had retired the traditional view was re-established as French and his protege Major General Haig rose to the top of the army. The recommendations of the commission were never fully implemented. The Escher report into the future of the army, overshadowed its findings, and came to be dominated by the high Tory reorganization of the War Office. Colonial Secretary, when the Liberals returned to power in 1905, Elgin became Secretary of State for the Colonies, with Winston Churchill as his undersecretary. As Colonial Secretary, he pursued a conservative policy, and opposed the generous settlement of the South African question proposed by Prime Minister Campbell Bannerman, which was enacted more in spite of the Colonial Secretary's opposition than due to his efforts. After being dropped from the next government by the next Prime Minister Asquith Elgin retired from public life in 1908.